the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shell this. And I'm going to set my thickness. I know this thing is about 10 and a half inches, right? Because we set that. So a reasonable thickness would be like 0.1. <clears throat> going to hit OK. And then I'm going to pick the face to remove from this. Well, I want to shell it from here, right? This is where I want to be open. So I'm just going to click that, and I'm going to run this. And you'll notice what we get is a shelled object. And if we look at it in wireframe, you'll see that it's created the internal surfaces. Now, as this sits, this is something that could be rapid prototyped. You could send this to a printer, and it would print with wall thickness. Now, there's a reason I shelled that before I added the fillets. Okay, if I go back to front view, you notice I still have sharp edges here that I really kind of would rather not deal with. And actually, you know what? I'm going to back up once, and I'm not going to shell this just yet. Let's unshell that. Let's add a little bit of detail to this thing first. And the reason that I'm going to add this detail, let me just talk about why I'm doing it this way. All right. If I have a corner of an object, okay, and I offset it, okay, I offset this wall this way, and I offset this wall this way, look what happens. See this right here? This is called a bow tie. This is essentially an invalid geometrical situation. Now, what Rhino typically does, if this, is a, if this is something that it can resolve, what this typically does is Rhino will actually trim this and create a valid offset. Sometimes when the, the curves are filleted to start with, it can't necessarily resolve that correctly, and so this ends up becoming something that Rhino can't resolve. So what I like to do is give Rhino the best opportunity for shelling something by waiting to fill its stuff until after I shell. So let's do that. Let's add the details that we want. And I want to add like a little grip detail in here. So let's, let's do something like that. So I'm going to pick just a regular curve. And I'm going to draw just a curve through here. All right. And I'm OK, happy with that. But you know, maybe I want to mess with the points on this. So I'm going to turn the points on. And then I'm going to pick these. And I'm going to just adjust this curve and designer nerd out a little bit. Maybe I want these two points to line up. So I'm going to pick them, double click that, and do my scale trick so I know this is now symmetrical and I can change the attitude of this curve by moving the center point. So let's say, I don't know, something like that is good. And I want this detail to be on both sides so I'm going to mirror it using the mirror command from zero, hold down the shift key, and I've just made two copies of it. So now I'm going to use a, a tool called WireCut. And what WireCut does, imagine this is a bandsaw. You've got a magical laser-powered bandsaw that can just cut perfectly through anything. I'm going to just wire cut this here. And I'm going to cut through this object. And I'm going to keep all. That's important, because we want to keep these pieces. So now look what happens. I just chopped that piece out of there. So let's do the same thing over here. Oops, got to do it right. Wire cut. That's the curve. That's the object. Keep all. Done. So now I can get rid of these curves. Or even better, I can move them to that layer, which since that layer is hidden, they hide. And now I've got two pieces, right? I can just pull this out. So let's look at this in perspective and see what we have. See, it made a nice solid cut. Not only did it cut it, but it made surfaces on each side of where that cut is. And that's useful. Because we're going to do a little, a little, a little, I was going to say a hack, but that makes it sound bad. Um, we're going to do a little trick here. If I click on my scale handle, but if I hold down the shift key, it scales in 3D. And look what I can do. I can just bring this in like that. Now, this is not what I want. I don't want it to look like that. What I wanted it to do was to scale in. So I scaled it 
3D by holding the shift key. Now I'm going to scale it 1D by just dragging the handle. So let's take a look at what we just did. So we just made this little offset piece. Cool, right? Now, how do I connect these two? Well, I'm going to just do a Boolean union, which is this guy right here. So I'm going to pick this. I'm going to drag select all of this and right click. Now, if I go to wireframe, it has joined and trimmed all of this stuff into a nice closed volume. Well, now that we have that, let's go back and do our shell. Let's do pick this face up here. It's going to shell. And you'll notice that it's created a nice wall thickness part. Now, <clears throat> since this is a concept that I'm going to send to a printer, right, theoretically, I'm not terribly concerned about the inside surface of here. I just need a wall thickness. So for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to just worry about the outside. If you wanted to get nutty, you could do the next, the next phase of this project, which is to start adding some fillets to this stuff. You could do this on the inside and the outside, but I would recommend doing that after you shell. If you shell it with the fillets installed um, or, or already created, um, chances are the shell may or may not complete. You have a much better chance of getting a good shell if you shell it before you fill it. Little order of operations thing going on there. So let's add some fillets to this thing. I'm going to pick this. Let's, uh, let's do this in shaded mode so we can see what's going on. Now, I want to fill it this edge and this edge. If you notice, my current setting is 1. Now look what happens. See this preview handle? Look at how big this fillet's going to be. It's going to go from here to here. That's way too big. That's never going to complete, right? Because the surface has to come outside the model. So let's click on this handle and let's drag it down to something reasonable. And what I like to do is eyeball it till it's something reasonable, like, I don't know, 0.1. But I don't want to fuss around with trying to figure out exactly, trying to like drag it, oh, it's too much, it's too big, it's too small. It's too, uh, I really just want it point 0.1. So I'm going to just type point 0.1, and it updates it. I have to do the same thing to this guy. I already know it's point 0.1, so I'm just going to type point 0.1 now. Now you'll notice that our previews, this is where the fillet is going to go, right? And I can even click to preview to see what the thing is going to look like. That makes sense. I've got room here on this surface. I've got room here. All that stuff seems like it's going to work. So let's just run it. There's our fillet. Let's do the same thing over here. We already know what our settings are, so we're just going to repeat variable fillet. Click here. Click here. Click here. Click here. Not that one. Control. Oops. Nah, sorry. <laughs> Let's do that again. Repeat. Pick the wrong edge. I picked the inside edge. Now, why is this edge split? Well, the edge is split because this was a revolved surface, and there's a seam here. So this edge is split based on the seam. No biggie. So let's go ahead and set all of these. Right click. Oops. Too big, right? because I forgot to set it. So let's set all, and let's make these 0.1. Now it looks right. Now we accept it. OK? And actually, you know what? 0.1, did it do that on both sides? It did. Look, what happened? These fillets overlapped here. So 0.1 is actually too big. So let's undo that. Super easy to do. We're just going to undo, undo, repeat the fillet. And we know 0.01 is too big, so let's go 0.0, I don't know, 75. Let's run all of these now. Here, 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 here. Did you catch what I noticed there, why that fillet was too big? Over here, before when we ran that before, the edge of this fillet and the edge of that fillet were crossed because the fillets were too big. 
which means that it made essentially it wasn't a bad fillet because the surface made and the surface completed correctly, but it wouldn't have been a solid object. That would have been an open edge. So in this case, now we've got a nice completed detail, right? And like I said, if you wanted to get crazy with this, you could go and actually do the same thing to the inside surfaces, but I don't really care about the inside surfaces at this point, so I'm not going to worry about it. You get the idea. So let's go ahead and finish this up. Let's let's add some more let's add some more fillets to this and add some more shape. So I don't have to do these just one at a time. I can fill it a bunch of stuff all at one time. So let's go ahead and do that. I can right click, get my variable radius fillet, and I want to do this edge, I want to do this edge, I want to do this edge, I want to do that one, I want to do that one, I want to do that one, and maybe we'll even get crazy and put a tiny little one there. So let's look at each one of these. All right. As it sits, they're all set to 0.075, but I don't want that. I don't want them all look the same. So I'm going to click this one. I'm going to make it bigger. All right. Maybe even bigger. Maybe even bigger. Get a nice soft one right there. So that looks good. This one. Maybe I want that one to be 0.15, and that one looks good, and since this is kind of a lead-in, lead-out situation, maybe I want this one to be 0.15 too, or 0.15 as well. And then this one, maybe this one wants to be somewhere in the middle, something like that, yeah, maybe bigger, what's 0.25 look like? Well, that's kind of cool. See how the preview updates so you can kind of see what you're doing? And then it would make sense for this one to be kind of 0.15, just from a family of shapes point of view. And then I'm okay with that one being small. And then this one wants to be tiny. So let's do this one like 0.04. So I've just set up a bunch of different variables for a bunch of different fillets, previewed them, and decided that they look good, so now I'm just going to run it. Feeling pretty good about the water bottle. How's that look? Right? So at this point, we've kind of finished this, right? It's kind of, it's kind of completed. Um, so let's make sure that we don't screw this up. Let's do file save. And we're going to do water bottle 2 because I don't want to overwrite the practice when I did before. And now this is good to go, right? Religion may save your soul, but only control S will save your data. So 